hello guys and welcome in this new video in the game engine series hope you guys are doing good it's been a while i haven't uploaded a video in this series and i have two main reasons for that the first one is because i wanted to you know take a break from all of these and think about what i'm going to do with all of these you know this youtube stuff and game engine series stuff you know it's really important for me to know my next step because i'm almost done with my studies yet because I'm a student and I want to know, you know, which path I want to take for my future. Therefore, I wanted to have like an, an outside of a view of on the things that I've been doing. So I took like distance from it, but I was still working on the game engine. And the second reason is also because, yeah, as I've already mentioned, I'm a student and I had um, exams going on. And now still I'm working on my, uh, on my uh, final thesis. So um, it's still not easy for me to make some videos. Another reason that I also want to mention is the fact that I was a little bit washed up, you know, not because it's not working. I'm getting subscribers every day. I'm getting comments every day. I have people subscribing on Patreon and, you know, I'm actually, you know, this is actually working. So it's not about the fact that this is not working and I'm frustrating anything like that. It's, it's mostly because I really want to be sure that, you know, this is something that I could spend my future on. Because um, if I just start this and leave this like it is right now without ending it, without making something and put it out there, what was the point of it? Maybe it inspires other, I don't know, maybe, yeah. But in one of my videos, someone wrote a comment below and he asked me, what was my purpose with this game engine series? And I couldn't answer because I didn't know. and I still don't know yet what I really want from this, but what I want to say is um, I'm just working on it. I really have fun writing code and uh, that's why I kept working on it and I'm still going to keep working on it in, uh, when I have uh, free time and stuff like that. And I really hope I'm going to be, you know, uploading more videos about this game engine, but yeah, it's not easy for me to be honest. But there is also one thing that I really want to throw out there in case someone watching this video might be interested in. Um, if you're living in Germany like me and you're interested in partnering with someone, uh, yeah, because if I have someone helping me on this project, then maybe I'm going to take it more serious. You know, working on it alone, when you're frustrated, you have no one you can, you know, express your frustration to. And so I'm not just looking for someone, but I'm looking for someone that really has interest and that I can trust because, yeah, that's really important for me. I also don't want someone that we will never meet. I, I'm not interested in that. I really want someone with whom we can meet live and speak about things and plan a lot of things. Maybe have a bit of uh, vision on this project. Maybe not a game engine, but something else. I just want someone with whom I can exchange ideas and, you know, share my experience with and with whom I can partner in a project. Um, yeah, I speak German, French and English, as you can see, obviously, or at least I try. So if you speak one of those languages and you think you really uh, have passion for programming, uh, something like this or something else that you know could be interesting, write me below. I'm going to be there to answer. If you've been following my channel, you know, I almost always answer comments. So I don't have like 1 million subscribers. I can handle 3000 comments. So go ahead and write comment down there and let me know. I really wish yeah, you guys will be interested in that. Okay. So about the game engine itself, I've been working on it and um, I have been working, you know, partly I'll say. And right now, the last thing I've been working on is to add an image-based lighting. I've been uh, following the tutorial on the Learn OpenGL platform, but um, turns out uh, I'm not getting the same result as they they actually are getting. So, if you have something, a book, or maybe um, you know a post that could help on understanding this concept of image-based uh, lighting, that's gonna be quite interesting for me. So, as you can see, my skybox is not being sampled properly because I have a HDR file from which I sample a cube map and I use that cube map to create my irradiance matrix which I can use to create some reflection in objects 
And as you can see, this object is reflecting too much of um, of the scene. But yeah, that's because the light wasn't also showing up on it. I have a light source here, a point light. Let me add a shape on it so you can see it. Um, yeah, let's see. I'm going to add another sphere and I'm going to make it smaller just because we don't need to have it bigger. So this is my point light, as you can see here. And yeah, I just feel like something is not working properly. And um, yeah, I don't know exactly what it is. Um, one of the problem I'm facing is that when I increase the size of my frame buffer, the frame buffer I'm using to actually uh, sample this cube map here, it doesn't work. So when I go like over 512, um, you know, pixel for each axis, the width and the height, then it just don't show anything. So if you guys know why that could be happening, share your experience with me, please. So, um, yeah, I've been changing a lot of things and I've been trying to make this, um, even, um, robust, uh, robust and yeah, because I really like it when I work with a program and it doesn't crash every time I try to do something. That's something that I really like. You can see I can add entities and the entities ID I handle, um, you know, dynamically. So if I add, for example, let's say this is entity eight. If I remove this and I add another one, you see, it's going to be entity eight. So the ID of this entity that was destroyed has been, um, you know, um, set available. So anyone, any new entity will take that ID first. And if I add another one, you see it picked from the last one that I had here. So this is actually to prevent, um, anyone from having like thousand entities with big numbers because someone will add over and over and over and over but every time you delete an entity the id of that entity is going to be available for any new entity that could be created so it's going to be possible to have an entity with that id so and um, it's as you can see i can remove entity fastly without everything anything crashing and all the components are also getting removed with the entity it's not like the the entity is 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 saying in the memory so i can show my tax manager um yeah right now i'm running in debug mode i have a lot of checking going on with my as uh, with my assert and stuff this is the cpu usage and um i can show you the frame rate here you can see we have a decent frame wave uh, frame rate even though i'm using obs to actually record my screen, we still have a 60 frame rate and I locked it to have a 60 frame rate as, as value. But I could, you know, set this, you know, uh, I can disable the, the, the V-Sync and I'm, I'm reaching like 300 FPS in some cases. My computer is not the, you know, most powerful computer you can see out there, but it's quite powerful. It's, it's, it's something that I really like about this game engine. So, and obviously I can easily add component to entities without it crashing or anything like that. You can see, I can add any component. Uh, yeah, there's nothing inside of the box collider. I can add a mesh, you know, just pick which mesh I want it to have. The cube, it's a huge cube here. I'm using the face cooling. That's why this face is not actually showing up. Um, yeah. I can use um, a sphere instead. And um, what can I do else? I can play around with the material. You can see, you can see the color of this entity here. It's getting, you can see the albedo and the light effect is just there. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I can play with the op opacity so I can make this object transparent. You can see through it, you see. You can see through it through the object, making it transparent. Um, what else? Yeah, we can add some um, um, materials and stuff like that. But yeah, that's not actually important. Yeah, you can add component as I said easily. Script also, but I disable it for some reason. I've been working on the API. This is also one thing that, which is quite hard for me right now and uh, directional light and stuff so um as i said this game engine has potential i think so because the way i'm doing it it's quite um i think it's good 
the way my code is laid out. Anyone who takes this code can understand what is going on and I'm trying to keep the code as clean as possible. You're not gonna find some old stuff that I was written like five months ago, which is not be being used. Every time I make sure I refactor the code, clean it before I put it on GitHub just to maintain it. And yeah, it doesn't have a lot of features, uh, sadly, but it could have as much as someone might think about. So it's just a matter of, do you want to work on it? Do you want to put yourself in a position to make this look like a real game engine? So that's the question. So I don't want to make this video uh, too long. I just wanted to share, um, you know, what I've been working on and what I feel right now with you guys. And um, just let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Do you think this could be something I could focus on? Do you think this is something someone can, you know, put his feature on? Or maybe you think I could bring this in another direction where I could be more specific about what I'm doing, not building maybe a game engine, but something specific. If you have any ideas, share with me. This is Medicode and um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Have a nice night. Ciao.